Hi everyone, you join me in the village of Alvadistan, nicknamed Alvadistance. You'll see why in a minute. It's very drizzly today. I'm putting my wellies on to go and see the church that was the first church that I visited on the Salisbury Organist channel back in August last year. Why am I coming back? Well, it's because there is so much more to say than I had time for last time. I was very nervous. But I did my best and it started off my life as I know it today. Doesn't it look stunning? The ultimate in English pastoral scenery. Before I go in, there's a grave here that I'd really love to see, and I didn't see it last time. Let's go for a wander. I can't find it, but judging by who it is, I'd expect it to be quite well kept. Found it. Anthony Eden, Earl of Avon. 1897 to 1977 and he has the best spot in the churchyard now it's time to go in I was just wondering how you close this bird-proof gate from the inside when the latch is on the outside. And then I found this. It still has me stumped, I'm afraid. I might just leave it and close the main door.
You're probably wondering why I'm here with no backpack, no sheet music. Well, this is a Salisbury organist reconnaissance trip. The organ has just been overhauled and had a big restoration job, which is fantastic. So that means I can use it to its full potential. And all I want to do is see what it can play. The full recital on this organ will have to wait till my next video, because this is the bit why I need peace and quiet. In the meantime, my friends, why don't you look at the incredible scenery? done. And now it's back home for a day of thinking and planning. I hope you don't mind me saying that all of these trips are completely unpaid. And I would really appreciate any support funding my expenses so that I can make these films as good as possible. If you'd like to do that, there's a PayPal link beneath the video, which is the best way. And I'd be really, really grateful. In the meantime, I'll get practicing. I can't wait to show you how this amazing organ sounds. Back in the dry, and yes, I definitely can't wait to show you how that organ sounds. You might know how it sounds if you remember my first ever organ road trip last August. What you just saw was what I call my research trip or reconnaissance trip, where I just go and peacefully spend some time in the church, taking photos, picking up a church history, and most importantly, trying the organ out just to see how it sounds, what kind of music would be appropriate. I often do this for my videos. What you just saw is not normally filmed, and I did enjoy the spontaneity of filming it. And how about the next part of the process? Welcome, my friends, to my music room, and this is my own practice organ. Let me introduce you to a lifelong friend. This is my old Viscount Crescendo practice organ. It looks quite snazzy, doesn't it? But it actually costs nothing, except for the hire of the van. If you're an organist, this kind of thing is priceless. But if you aren't, it's a fairly useless piece of furniture. By complete chance, a year after I'd started learning the organ, this became available via an advert in the Salisbury and District Organists Association newsletter. And obviously I replied straight away. Before that, practice was really hard. I had about half an hour in the school chapel once a week. And that was difficult because you couldn't guarantee privacy. And if you're just starting to learn an instrument, you don't want a lot of other people hearing the noise that you're making. This completely transformed my life. Mm -hmm. 
I could get completely obsessed with organ music, learn music much quicker, and I went from grade zero to grade eight distinction, I might add, in just over two years. I needed a grade eight to get into Oxford, so I was determined to do it as fast as I could. It has two keyboards, just like a conventional pipe organ, and a full-size pedal board. There are also two swell pedals. The one on the left is for the lower keyboard, and of course the one on the right for the upper. At the moment it's broken, which is a bit annoying. Anyone know how to fix it? It seems to be jammed in the open position. It's an electrical problem, not a mechanical problem. But it's happened twice before, and both times it's fixed itself. It's clever like that. Anyway, there's an array of stops for the pedals, the lower manual, and the upper manual. Far more than I need. There's also thumb pistons and toe pistons. Let me switch it on for you. I believe this is analogue, so it's actually quite noisy when you switch the echo and the fern on. Benjamin. He is easygoing, lovable, generous and caring. A true and faithful man. Quite right. So why am I showing you this? Well, I want to show you what's involved in preparing these miniature recitals I make for my videos. And I have a plan for a few pieces to play Alva Diston when I go back, which are well suited to the organ there, and which also have a broad narrative to them. This is my provisional program for Alva Diston. So we have Promenade from Pictures at an Exhibition by Mazorgsky, the hymn Ye Holy Angels Bright, an Andante Religioso by Mendelssohn leading into the hymn For the Beauty of the Earth, and finally Pièce d'Orgue by Bach. Before I give you a snapshot of each of those pieces, here on the Viscount. Let me show you a bit more about what I found about this quirky organ at Alva Diston. This is an interesting one. Let me just go down to the basics here. So, pedal department, pedals. The grate is the lower keyboard, that's these stops. And the swell is the upper keyboard, that's these ones. The organ has no swell pedal. So effectively, these are just two different departments of the organ. No crescendos. But it's when you look closer that things become very interesting. The pedals are very loud. Sub bass, octave, and a four foot. That's really unusual for a tiny village church organ. Even St. Martin's Church in Salisbury does not have a high four foot sound. And then look over at the grate. The organists among you will already see that this is unusual. We have a four foot and two mixture stops. Those are really bright, almost shrill sounds. The swell division is the most normal. Eight, four, two. It's what you might describe as neoclassical. So we have an organ with a strong bass section, a grate without an eight foot, which if you're an organist is almost unheard of, and then a swell, which is fairly conventional. In other words, the top keyboard almost takes precedence over the bottom one, which is the reverse of what you'd normally have on a pipe organ. It's a really strange kind of design. The organ was originally a practice instrument in Crewkern Parish Church in Somerset, and then in 1975 it was bought by Alverdiston Parish. It's definitely best for Baroque music, or music which doesn't have big crescendos or any slushy kind of romantic features. So that's why I've chosen the programme that I have. The first piece on my proposed Alverdiston recital programme is Promenade from Pictures at an Exhibition by Mazorgsky. Hmm, why would I choose that? Well, not only is it suited to the sound of the Alvadistan organ, 
but it goes back to the beginning of my own musical journey. I didn't learn the organ from being a chorister at a church or a cathedral, anything like that. I started because of progressive rock music, like Pink Floyd, which led on to Emerson, Lake and Palmer, and various other kind of classical crossover songs like Procol Harum, and Whiter Shade of Pale. So a lot of those use Hammond organs. And at the time I thought a Hammond organ and a pipe organ were basically the same thing. Turned out it was quite a bit different. Anyway. You'll all know of the album Pictures at an Exhibition by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. In one of his live performances, Keith Emerson does actually play the opening promenade on a pipe organ, so that's my reason for choosing it. Here's how it goes. A short snippet from Pictures at an Exhibition by Mazorgsky. After that, at Alvadiston, ideally, I'd like to play a hymn tune. And my inspiration for this is the funeral service for Anthony Eden, which of course took place at St Mary's. I did see a recording on YouTube showing the coffin being carried into the church, a real recording of his funeral service, and the music playing in the background was a hymn I knew well, but I couldn't work out what it was. And I kept listening to this over and over again, and eventually I realised it was the hymn, Ye Holy Angels Bright. Let all thy days till life shall end, whatever he send be filled with praise. Next I have Mendelssohn's Andante Religioso, and it sounds just like a hymn, which is very, very apt for the scenery around St Mary's. See if you can spot the resemblance. And finally, the last piece on the menu is Pièce d'Orgue by Bach. Why am I playing that? Well, it was the opening piece from my finals recital at Oxford, but mainly because it should work really well at our distance. Strong pedals, spiky sound. So I'm hoping that should be a grand finale for that recital. It's in three sections. Let me just show you a snippet of each.
So there we are, that's the provisional program for my upcoming Alva Distan video, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit more behind the scenes about how I prepare. I've got two pieces to finish with, because I know that you like these videos to end on something grand and mighty on a rousing instrument. First of all, a piece I composed mainly here, but also at St. Martin's. This is the theme music from my channel, Postlude for Mechanical Action, which you haven't yet heard on this episode, so you deserve to hear it in full. Here goes. postlude for mechanical action. I hope you enjoyed that on the mighty organ of St. Martin's, which inspired it really. I composed that piece last year and I've learnt to contain my head movements a bit since then. Anyway, I have one more hymn to set your week off to a good start. 
This is a hymn I played on a video on my Patreon page recently at the beginning and somebody said, what was that hymn tune you played at the beginning? So here it is in full and it's called All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Until next time, I hope you have a great week.